Welcome to Catch Up with World Mag. I'm your presenter, Forever Sasha. Today's episode is sponsored by Flat Cap Rum. Flat Cap Rum is an alcoholic beverage business that can be found on Instagram at Flat Cap Drinks or on the web www.flatcapdrinks.com. Okay, let's talk about today's guest. Now, today's guest is a man that wears many hats, although it always says no jing bang. People, you know who I'm talking about, but just in case you do not, let me tell you, he is a member of the Black Chinese Sound. He is also a host. He's the man with the million dollar voice. He's a man that has been around for a very long time, but has been very active. In the past few years, we've seen him on the scenes in the dance hall. Out of port, in a port, people, I am talking about the one and only no jing bang bass. English fire. <laughs> Sasha, what's going on? What's good? Woo, it's the same name again. <laughs> <laughs> what's good? I'm, I'm good. Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it again. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm here talking to English fire people. Like, I've worked with English fire. I've worked with you, right? Sucks. A few times. Yeah. But I'm actually looking into your eyes, talking <laughs> to you, like, across the room from each other. It's a little different. Yeah, it, it actually is different. So... I know you as a host before I know you as a DJ, if yeah. I'm honest. And then I read your bio, etc. Yeah. But it's the man with the million dollar voice. Just a little bit. Why is it a million dollar, not a million pound voice? For those who don't know. Um, just because of the accent, I guess. Because mm -hmm. it's the American accent, it just made sense that I was the million dollar and not the million pound. You show me. So, so what's your background? What's happening with your accent? You're here. Your name is English Fire, but you have an American accent. Mm -hmm. How does it work? All right, so for those that don't know, I'm going to break down the story. This is like the millionth time I've told this story. All right, so yeah. I was born in the UK, migrated to the States um, as a very young child. So when I migrated to the States, naturally the nickname was English boy, you English boy. So the nickname English kind of stuck. Um, and then when I became a DJ, the English just stuck. And then the fire was added later on, but... I grew up in the States. I was in the States 80% of my life. Wow. Okay. So going to the States, when you're still developing your speech and developing your vocabulary, mm -hmm. you're automatically going to pick up where you are. So, Even though you've said this it. is the millionth time you've said that story, it's the first time I'm hearing it. I actually thought you were born in America. Everybody does. Okay. So Until they born hear, here. And th then they ask, but where's the English come from? They're like, all right, cool. Born here, migrated as a very young child. Very right. young. I think I was like nine or ten. And that young. Yeah. If you... <laughs> you said very young child. Like two, three. Nah, nine or ten if you know my age How now. How old are you now? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I can figure. I've, I've, been I've been in the game for a long time. I've yeah. been in the game longer than some of these DJs have been born. Okay. So that tells you. Wow. Yeah. So you've been around from when John Panson did I keep? Like right after that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. So that's good to get that, uh, no, backstory about basically you the name, born yeah. here and then Margaret, going to the yeah. States. Yeah. But now you're here in the UK for good. This is where you're, you call home now? This is home for now. Mm -hmm. um, this is home for now. That's all I can say. This is home for now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tell us about your DJ journey. Like, when did it start? How Ooh. did it start? That started at a very young age as well. You know, I started DJ when I was about 13. But that yeah. was just like, Gimmicks. It wasn't nothing serious. Mm. Um, but then I joined a sound. The first sound I joined was a sound called Genesis, um, which is actually a big sound. And I was, I did the, the regular DJ thing as a kid. I carried the records. I helped with the setup. That was me. You know what I mean? Um, so today's DJs will never know. Yeah, y'all would never understand mm. carrying boxes and licking up your knees against the record. Oh, you would God. never understand. Mm. But that's where the journey started. Um... And my first taste of the game was as an MC. So that's why you get the host. I was never wanted to put on headphones and go, Wiki. I never wanted to do that. Okay. You know what I mean? My, my whole focus was as an MC. Um, then, you know, the family, uh, DJs, some of the family were all DJs at the time. Then um, I kind of took it serious when I was about 16, 17. Um, a cousin of mine was on a sound from Jamaica called Delta Force, and he was living in New York. And I went to New York for the clash. This was in, now I'm telling my age. This was in 97. Okay. So I went to the clash in 97. I'm not going to tell you how old I was in 97. 
But I went to the class. We will figure it out, guys. By the I, end of this I was interview, older, we'll I was know. older than 17, but I went to the class <laughs> in 97. Yeah. Um, and I actually went there to cut dubs for the sound that I was on. Mm. But I was just there, you know, supporting my cousin or whatever. And he introduced me to um, a partner of his that was owning another sound in California. They might do much yeah, over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, he, he introduced me to um, the owner of his sound who had a partner that was in California that they was doing business. Mm. And I ended up join, leaving the sound I was on and joining that sound. Okay. And that's when I actually was like, oh, okay, this is a business, take it mm. seriously. And I moved from Florida to California. Okay. So I lived in LA and played that sound in LA. Then I went to Jamaica and played music. And that's the transition of me actually becoming a DJ. Because at that point, I had no choice. Right. I had to put on headphones and mix and do mm. the whole nine yards. So that was my real journey. And then after that, I left that sound after a while, um, joined the sound that I currently am, uh, I say, part owner in, Prodigy Movements. Um, and I was on that sound for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I joined Black China. I joined Black China in 2009. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I became a global. I remember hearing brand. Black China when I was in Jamaica as a kid. I hear Black China, like they used to play the. The remixes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I knew the like, mm -hmm. being in Florida, we all knew each other, you know what I mean? Yeah. I went to high school with Walshy. I knew Bobby, I knew Dups. We all, and it's a funny story because at the time, <laughs> Prodigy and Black Chinese was supposed to clash. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because I, they said something in a dance and, you know, typical artists, DJs, you hear something, wait, is he talking about me? Shots fired. Talk, talk. Yeah, yeah. All right, so then we went back and forth arguing and I went in a dance, dissed them, they went in a dance, dissed me. So everybody tried to put on the event because at that time, Prodigy was the hottest sound in the dance hall. Right, Black right. Chinese was the hottest commercial sound. Mm. So they wanted to see that rivalry. I was at the top of my game at that time. Yeah. Um, but they were high school, well, she was like a high school friend. Like, yeah. he's a high school friend. So I saw him at a dance and he was like, yo, English. Please, man, just, just leave us alone, man. Yeah. Leave us alone. So I ended up just scratching that. And then maybe a year and a half later, they approached me to join. Mm -hmm. And I, at first I refused because I was doing my own thing for such a long time. But then they asked again. And my mother always told me when an opportunity comes knocking twice, you have to look into it a little bit deeper. Oh, okay. Right? So I looked into it and I was like, you know what? This is a chance that may not come again. This is a chance for me to go beyond where I was at. Yeah. I was already traveling, but I wasn't traveling like that. I wasn't known globally like Black Chinese was. Mm. I was a local star, basically. So Where's I the biggest place you think um, your DJing skills have taken you? Africa. Okay. How long were you there for, and what was the crowd? Um, oh, the biggest crowd I've ever played for would be Spain. Mm. But the, the, the furthest I've ever gone for me was Africa. Like, that was... I didn't realize this yeah. journey could take you there. Okay. But I've toured the world. Like, I've gone everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how far music can take you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're 16, 17, 18, your, your vision is a little bit smaller than what it is until you start experiencing the world. True. You know what I mean? So when you start getting out there and you start traveling and you start realizing your music is influencing people that don't have the same color as you, mm -hmm. that don't speak the same language as you, and they are screaming yeah. at you. Like, they are screaming at you. It's euphoric. And um, I've been fortunate and blessed enough to, yeah. to do that. But the biggest stage I ever DJed on was in Spain, Rotterdam Festival, and then the Red Bull Culture Clash. Mad. Yeah. So you've literally been on journeys with your career, something that initially wasn't Plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Until you moved, and then you realize, like, wait, this is this works. This is it. Yeah. This is crazy. So, so, but now you're mostly known as a host. Yeah. Is that okay? Is that what you want it to be? Yeah. Yeah. It's the transition. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like I said, I've been in the game a long yeah. time, mm -hmm. and for me, this is a natural transition for me. Yeah. This is my way of exiting one part, but still staying within the entertainment industry. I love the industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've wanted to retire from DJing for about 
six, seven years. Yeah. Like, people ask, why do you want to retire? And I'm like, do you know how old I am? Yeah. Do you know how long I've been doing this? <laughs> like, for y'all, it's 10, 15 years. Like, I'm, I'm a little wow. bit longer than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me... But your love and passion for it is still yeah, there. Yeah, my love and passion for the game is still there. So mm. that's why I try to speak to the younger DJs. Mm. I think that's my calling now. Right. I, I think that's where my calling is. My mm. calling is to be a mentor to the younger DJs and that new generation coming in. Yeah. And then for me and my career path, I think it's going towards being a host. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've kind of transitioned from being the DJ side and concentrated more yeah. on doing the hosting and things like that. Even though you said that you're, you feel like your calling is to, you know, mentor the younger DJs, etc. Me as a host that's basically been on the scene for like just over a year now, if yeah. that I find that working with you, I've learned so much. And I'm sure that a lot of other hosts, if they're honest, would say the same thing. Because I'm not going to lie, not because you're here. You're <laughs> like the only host that's within this scene. Because there are yeah. other hosts that I would actually go and see. That yeah. I will go and watch. Because I feel like I could go and leave. I could learn something. Do you know what I mean? That. So that. big up yourself for that as well. So it's not just the DJs you're providing. You're providing, you're providing to the hosts <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I feel like that's my calling now. Yeah. I, I feel like my calling is now to just be a mm. mentor and help. And that's, that's where I find... Yeah. The most gratitude, and that's where yeah. I find the most passion right now. And you're so calm and cool on stage. It's like no matter what the stage is, you always approach it with the same energy. It's like you can don't don't video the crowd. Just video <laughs> English fight. You can never tell where he is. If the crowd is big or the crowd is small, the energy is still the same. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 So how for you to do such a thing like that? Did you ever feel like there was a time where you're like, oh, I didn't do as good as I wanted to do? Are there like some fallback, some safety net you feel like all hell breaks loose? This is where I go. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. I don't want to release the yeah, 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 yeah. secrets. Because we might see when you're falling. Yeah, through. you're like, ah, oh, he's fumbling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think everybody has that um time where you're where you're on stage and you're like, oh, I didn't just say that. <laughs> oh, I didn't just do that. But it's the recovery. Yeah. It's the recovery that that you know determines if you're good at your job. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm good at recovery. A lot of people do give you props as a host as well, like, even before they acknowledge me as a host, because yeah. I was kind of thrust into this, in a sense. I wasn't... It wasn't planned. It wasn't premeditated. I was just being myself, and then Worm Mag said, hey, come over here, and then, <laughs> before you know it... Organic. She's a it's host. organic. Yeah. But I've been hearing English fans, like, English fans are really good hosts, etc. And when I hear that, even hearing it from DJs as well, yeah. I don't know, maybe they were saying it because they didn't want you to be a DJ anymore. <laughs> it could be. It's like, no, let's, get, let's get him out. Let's get him out of the game. Yeah. And, um, but no, I appreciate that. I, yeah. I, appreci I appreciate the love and respect from my peers. And I kind of treat all mm -hmm. my peers and all my colleagues the same yeah. way. You know what I mean? I kind of find... I don't think anybody's bigger than anybody, mm -hmm. you know? People look at me and they're like, oh, but you're English fire from Black Channel. And I'm like, take yeah. away that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I put on my pants one foot at a time. I wear the same <laughs> similar clothes that you, you wear. Click. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? So we're all on the same level. All I can have, I may just have a little bit more knowledge mm. than you, but mm. my job for me is to share that knowledge with you. That yeah. doesn't make me better than you. Mm. That just makes me, my experiences different than yours. And I may love that more, you're willing to share different. that knowledge. Yeah, I like, love that. I don't understand how people are not. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Knowledge is for everybody. It's mm. not for one person to hold like it's the gatekeeper. It's you know point. what I mean? Yeah. It don't make no sense. So what do you think about the hosting scene right now? What's happening? Because... I think you're amazing. <laughs> you think I'm amazing? I think right? you're absolutely amazing. I think you don't realize that you was made for that job. I think, like you said, you, you was thrust into it. Mm. But the way you have taken to that role and taken to that position... I think you're amazing. Thank you. I appreciate I, that. I think you're amazing. I've told you, T, you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. This is not something I, I, I shy away from or I hide. I don't glorify somebody behind their back. And then when yeah. I, I glorify you to your face and behind your back, you feel me? Yeah. So um, I think the hosting scene is similar to like, uh, I heard a friend of mine say, people are just doing parties just to make them money. Oh, right? Yeah. So I feel like people are doing hosting because mm -hmm. they just want to be seen. Mm. So... You just want to host yeah. because you want to be seen. Do yeah. you know what a host does? Do yeah. you know how a host needs to present themselves? Do you know inflection in your voice? Do you know where you talk from? Do you know how to project your voice? There's a lot that goes into it. And I don't think people actually know that yeah. part, but they feel like I just want to be seen mm -hmm. and I just want to talk. 
So for the host that, and it's like DJs as well. Like I could tell when you have the, I could tell when you actually want to do this. Okay. And I could tell when you're doing this for the girls and for the money. Mm. And for the free entry. And for the free entry. I could tell. <laughs> You yeah. know what I'm saying? And for a host, I could tell when you just want to be seen. Mm -hmm. And you don't care. You just want to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to help you. But <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. I think the scene is being, is, is being overtaken by people that just want to be seen. Mm. Some of them are actually good at what they do. Um, some of them actually want to be a part of the scene and help the scene and help that whole... Mm title of host yeah and then others just want to be glorified and be on instagram and snapchat and yeah you know what I mean? so do you think that we we could do with some more hosts but genuine ones yeah i i, I always think there's room for for growth mm -hmm. and i always think there's room for other people it's just got to be genuine with it yeah. you know what i mean it's just got to be a genuine love and, and passion that you have for it fully that's it because you like you said you can't see it when people are doing what they're doing from a place of love, you can see it. And then that's when people take to what, you know, so I hear that. Yeah. But you've been doing the hosting for a while. You've had big gigs, small gigs. Like I said, you don't shy away from, you know, yeah. sometimes I go to an event and even if you're not booked for it, I can tell that you're the type of person that if they say, rescue us, you'll do it. Yeah. You'll rescue us. <laughs> yeah, that, that's similar to me as well. Like, because I don't want an event to be a flop. Like, exactly. If I can, like... If I can know, help, I'll help. Right. Yeah. yeah. But... English fire, people, for those who don't know, here goes. This is actually my first time saying this out in public. Like, those closest to me know. Bus driver link up. Yeah. I got the call <laughs> from English fire. He recommended me to host bus driver link up, the very first one. And big thank you for that. You Welcome. know, I appreciate that 100%. Not a lot of people do that because, like you say, they want to be seen. They want the light on themselves. Exactly. You know, yeah. but for you to do that for me, basically, you just open the door for many other people because then it's for me to say, I need How can to, I pass that forward? Right? Exactly, exactly. So I appreciate that. Big applause for that thank one. Thank you, thank you. But you are, not that Not that I'm trying to say he should bring me in. It's English by your right? <laughs> <laughs> but Skeg, Governor, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming to the UK. Mm -hmm. You're hosting. Mm -hmm. That's Major League. Mm -hmm. That just came out the day and then hosted by English Fire. Somebody called me and said, Skeg is going to be here and English Fire is hosting. I said, where did you see that? <laughs> I just saw it on his page. I look on the fly, I didn't see hosted by him, but then I read the caption, it said, hosted by English. Well, I was like, oh God, it's real. Yeah. What happened there? How did that happen? A lot of people wanted to get Skeng here. I actually knew for a little while yeah, that yeah. Skeng and Governor was forwarded into the UK. I just couldn't say anything. Okay. Um, but I, I knew the date was booked. I knew what was going on. Yeah. And they reached out uh, and asked me to host and... Yeah. I gladly accepted that. I, I think that gladly you're definitely that. the person for the job. Like, no cap, no joke. Because, like, you, you, you've, had, you've got the experience. And yeah. it's, it's not just about that. I feel like if you're an upcoming host, it's, you're the perfect person to watch, in a sense, to see where you can make it from. Especially doing such a big show. It's mm. scaring governor. You know what's going to happen. You know yeah. what the crowd is going to be like, you know? So, no jing bang. Um... No Jing Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Talk um, about that. No Jing Bang is actually came from Chris Diamond from mm -hmm. Code Red. Um, he just came up with a slogan on his live and we just ran with it. And, okay. and Chris Diamond is actually a really, really close friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and just based on No Jing Bang, it was really just a way of saying... So no, we have got to thank you again. I, you see, this this man's <laughs> in my life like an angel. Chris Diamond was at my party and yeah. he played. He wasn't booked. Yeah. Chris Diamond played at my party, Paula yeah. Laundry. Thank you, English Fire. You're welcome. You're welcome. Again, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anywhere I can help, yeah, I'm yeah. going to put forward that. But no, he actually came up with his slogan, No Jing Bang, which basically just means no negativity. No okay. negativity, no waste, man, no foolishness. You know, when a girl gets her um, BBL, and her BBL makes her look like a BMW. Okay. You know, body made wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a jing bang body. That's a jing bang. So you're literally no jing bang. Yeah, no jing bang. Fully. And I love that it's on your cap. So there's no jing bang in the brain. There's no jing bang anywhere. None, right. zero, none at all. So no. So then we just ran with it and then we just started doing um, you know, little clothing lines with it. We had a, a female line that we we did last year just to test the waters. Um, but yeah, we just, I, I like the slogan, so yeah. I'm, I'm keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Fair enough. I've seen it also the first time I heard about No Jing Bang. Like, seriously, I heard people say it. Yeah. Till even Rave had done a song about yeah. it as well. Yeah. But to, that really took it seriously was the verses. Yeah. You know? Talk to me about the verses. We know about verses in the United States. Yeah. But the verses came to England. Um. Well, the first verses that we did, um, I spoke to Classic, Vibes Classic, and he kind of put an a, a idea in my head and I kind of was like, okay, cool. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I take ideas and I listen to people's opinions. And then I said to myself, oh, you know what? I wonder if we do a UK versus. Mm-hmm. But I wanted it to be like a true representation of the United States. I didn't want it to be a clash. So when I put it out, before I put it out, and I involved um, Starpoint, Nay, and, and Tugsy. I said, listen, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. This is my idea. What do you guys think? They was like, yeah, cool. Let's go with it. I was like, all right, cool. But I want to run it like the States. Mm-hmm. I want to do 10 songs, 10 songs. I don't want it to be a clash. Yeah. I want it to be a celebration of music. And I thought, I thought the UK would embrace that. And I thought that would be a way for people to buy into that artist and the artist's music. Okay. That was my plan. Okay. This is a way for your fans and new fans to now go purchase mm-hmm. your music because you're not, you're actually playing your songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So people may know the song, but not know the artist. Mm-hmm. Now they get to see you and you get a little performance with it. Mm-hmm. They're going to go on iTunes and buy your song. Where did that go left? Why did you think it went left? Because, and it went left because during the promotion, it was, yo, Spooky, I'm gonna kill Shanti. <laughs> Shanti, I'm gonna kill Spooky. Then yeah. my phone is ringing, and they're like, yo, I'm hearing that I'm supposed to be clashing. I'm like, no, it's not that. Don't yeah. listen to people telling you, or it's not that. But it's we need them songs. to say that though, because that's what's gonna get them over it's there. 10 songs, 10 songs. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right? And I really wanted to build that, because I felt like the UK was so divided. Mm. I felt like, the, within the dance or artists and the music, it was just so segregated. South is South. Mm-hmm. East is East. They don't really mesh. Mm-hmm. And if they do mesh, it's one person from one side and one person from the other side. But it's 50 from this side and 50 from that. We're up to the other 49. Mm-hmm. So I felt like if I could just bring this together and they could, we could celebrate music, not clash, mm-hmm. celebrate each other's accomplishments, achievements. I don't need to like you. You don't need to like me. But I respect you as an artist. Mm-hmm. You respect me as an artist. Let's get this done. Yeah. Then we had some technical issues mm. with, with the music being played. So when that went left, yeah. it just became Sting. Mm-hmm. It literally just became Sting. Yeah. Which turned out to actually be good. It, the vibe was actually really, 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 really good. <laughs> the, the, the vibe actually was really, really good. Yeah. But it didn't do what I wanted to do. Like that, you didn't leave from there going, I need to go on iTunes and buy this song, Mm -hmm. which is what I wanted for those artists. I wanted them to actually start making money. And it was more along the lines of, okay, and then the next day, sit down. And I was like, here we go. I hear that. I hear that about you wanting to make them make money, et cetera. Maybe some people did go on iTunes because it's because of that versus why I became a fan of Shanti Force's music, to be honest. So maybe it's done that for people with Spooky. Yeah, I, you know? I hope so. I, I've heard I of Shanti so. Force, but I never really paid much attention until that verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it did do something in that sense. And as for Sidan, that's a great thing. Yeah, for, listen, it, it was the way Sidan, you know, went about his business, mm. I thought was great. But then everybody's calling my phone. Yo, so the next verse is Sidan versus Spooky. But that's good. I was like, no, because then, <laughs> it, then all the verses would have to be like that. No, we, you, I'm glad you didn't do it, but yeah. it's good that people knew where to go, right? I, I, I knew that. I, I respect the people coming to our platform and was like, yo, this is what I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah. Which is why the next one, I went females and mm. didn't go... Just because I wanted to keep that vibe and that. understand this is about celebrating music. It's not about putting this person against this person. So do you think then what you could have done is maybe get person A... To do mm-hmm. person B song, person B to do person A song. See now, you, see this is why you you're on the same page <laughs> because I actually said to the two yeah. artists, you're gonna do this song, you're gonna do that song. Mm-hmm. I want to hear both of you interact. Tell him what mm-hmm. you like about his song. Yeah, yeah, sing yeah, a part yeah. of it. That was my whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, that will bring both of your fans together. You will get fans together, mm-hmm. not separate. 
yeah. your fans will become each other's fans and that will just grow them. That yeah. will grow. That right. will grow the industry. So that's why when I did the females, I made them very, very, very comfortable. I missed that one. I fell asleep. And it was, that, that was great energy. I, I love Bandy. And, um, Jordan, yeah, yeah. And I thought the energy for them was absolutely amazing. Yeah. It was good. It was good. And the way they spoke to each other, you know what I mean? They was a fan of each other. That's they spoke good. to each other. Like, I like that song. I remember when you did that song. I like that. That's it. And I like that. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? So that's why. So do you I like think that. we'll have another verses and hopefully, because this the first one didn't go to plan. The second one was better. Yeah. Maybe the third one will be spot on. Yeah, it's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah. Oh, does Will Mac like get a name or something? Clue. I can't. Just just the next verses will be big. <laughs> he said the next verse. <laughs> Be big. I feel like it will be big because people look forward to it. I remember the first verses. I literally tuned in for real as if it was the American one. I was <laughs> in the comments and I was watching. I was seeing names that I've never seen before on the screen commenting. Yeah. It was like a little community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It artists. was good. It was it was really, yeah. really, really, really good. I appreciate the support, man. I love y'all for the support. Yeah. All I can say is it's in the works. Yeah. So it's what next works. for, because we know the verses, we're having part three. Yeah. But what next? Is there any other projects that English Fire? Um... Can I speak about these projects? Yeah, oh, I can speak about these projects. Yes, you can. So I got the Skang and Governor show coming up. Uh -huh. I got the Chanel Muir tour that Wait, I'm hosting. Wait, Skang and Governor, when is that? Where is that? Did we say that already? Talk about that a little bit more. April... 17th, I think. There you go. Yeah, um, yeah bank, holiday, um, bank holiday weekend, Easter weekend. April 17th, 02, Indigo. Um, there is three more dates that has been added. Um, I could tell you the cities, but I can't reveal the dates. So okay. Manchester's been added, Birmingham's been added, Bristol's been added. Okay. All right. So if you're in those cities, Skang and Governor will be coming to your town. Man. Um, I've got Chanel Muir in June. Uh, we've got Caribbean Rocks Festival in July. Mm -hmm. Um, we have another Caribbean festival. In July. When you say we, are you hosting or are you part of the team promoting? The when I say we, yeah. I'm involved in some some manner, some shape or form. Oh, okay. Either I'm hosting or... Because not only do I do the hosting, I do try to help. You know what I mean? Some events I am involved exactly. in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, those events that I'm hosting, those events that I'm involved with and involved in... Um, yeah, there's a couple of shows. There's a couple of shows that are, are coming to the UK that I'm hosting. I I just don't want to yeah, jinx yeah, yeah. them because you know how the UK is and the Fully. entrance. So Fully. you know, busy snuck in the country the other day. So <laughs> <laughs> he snuck in and snuck out in 24 hours. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I thought he was listening to Danny Bless song when he did that. 24 <laughs> hours. <I did. laughs> Oh, God. So, no, nah, I got yeah. this. There's a couple of things, man. Just stay tuned to the he Instagram. He heard it. He heard it. You're called Ali, girl. Yeah. I'm over stage, so he's like, I'm going. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, so there's a couple of things. Just stay yeah. tuned to the Instagram. You know the vibe. Yeah, I hear that. So, you're being, you're on Instagram, like a lot of us are. Yeah. You know, you've seen what's been going on. There's always something to complain about. Yeah. Recently, one of the things that's been complained about is DJ's names not being on flyers. How do yeah. you feel about that? I come from, I, I don't, you have to remember, see, my opinion is a little bit different from somebody else that was raised That's here. That's important. You know what I mean? Mm. This whole London's finest and UK's top, whatever it says. Yeah. <laughs> now it don't bother me because I'm not a DJ, so it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> but I understand why it's being done. I don't think it's okay, but I understand why it's being done. Right. In the States, that would never happen. It would never happen. Like, even the name English Fire, the reason they got the fire part was um, a promoter was keeping an event and it was a group of DJs mm -hmm. that all hung together, right? We all part together no matter what. It was just thick right. as thieves. And on the flyer, he put music by the fire starters. Okay. And then put each sound that we represented. And it was like, fire starters? Oh, we like that. That's how I got English fire. fire. That's how there's another selector, Nasheen fire, mm. Jugsy fire. We all just took the fire off of it and added it to the mark, to the end of our names. Right. And we just ran with that. So you will always see your name hosted by Sasha, not hosted by UK's finest. Mm. It would say your name. Mm. So when I see the DJ's names missing, 
think the hosting's a little bit different, though. It, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> but I understand why yeah. DJ's names are not yeah. on there. I now realize... Because it's only one host, but you have lots of... Yeah, but some parties only have three or four DJs. Mm. But I understand... In the UK, the DJ's got to go through licensing. Like, they got to send your name to the police. The police got to run your... Yeah. The DJ's names have to be sent to the police. You have to get... In the UK? Yeah. Oh, please educate us. So, that's what happens. When a club is booking... When a promoter is booking certain clubs, they have to give a risk assessment. So, they have to provide the DJ's real name. That is sent to the police. And the police may say, Sasha, No. So that's how it initially started. So that's how it started. Sasha Mm. can't, if you have Sasha at your event, you can't keep your event. Got it. So that's why they were like, okay, to avoid me putting three DJs and leaving off one, I'm just going to put UK's finest. Okay. Or if your name was on the police registry for every time you keep an event, there's something that happens at your event. So now police are watching Sasha or they're watching English Fire. Red flag. So English Fire goes up on, oh, they're going to target that. So uh-huh. that's why they've done the UK's finest. Initially, because some people are running with it. Even some people, so now it just become, it's just become the normal now. Got it. Got so it. now mm-hmm. it's just become the normal. I'm not going to tell you who's playing, so you just show up. Yeah. But that was the initial reasoning for it. So I understood it. DJs, pick a lane. Either yeah. you're a DJ or you want to do something else. If you want to do something else on the streets, do your thing. Yeah. But understand that's going to affect your business and that's going to affect you as a DJ. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's not your fault. You know, you're keeping an event as a DJ. Something happens at your event. It's, you know, it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. But I understand it. It's just sad that we're in that time. Do you think it's possible for us to eradicate that problem of us having to have events in illegal venues and car parks, rolling under the bush, under the bridge, like kind of thing? Do you think that's going to be possible? or In the UK? Yeah. I'm going to be honest. No, no. Why not? Because the system is not set up for Caribbean people to have mm. much. You know what I mean? And it's, that's, that's just me being honest. It is not catered for that unless we as a, as a, t- as a community decided to pull our money together and buy clubs and buy venues and buy places. But as far as, mm. you know, you going into somebody's venue to rent it out, they, they're they scared to rent it out. But you say that, but you work with DJ Nate, who tends to get licensed venue. So when you say the system is, and I hear that, I know a lot of people speak about the systems. I don't give a, I'm yeah. personally, I don't care about the system because yeah. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Just shut up, system. <laughs> <laughs> New system. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So, because I feel like people use that as an excuse to not be great or yeah. to say, this is why I can't be great because the system yeah, yeah. again. DJ Nate does it. Yeah, but you know, you have to think about how many, all right, let's, let's take DJ Nate, for example, right? How many venues do you think DJ Nate uses? This is London we're talking about. Mm. The city of London, the capital of the UK. Mm. How many? Not, not a lot. Not even five. Mm. So if he can't use five. But he still managed to do something. So let's say he manages two. That's good. That's two. That means 185,000 promoters are fighting for two venues. What I'm trying to say to you is... Is there others? DJ Nate yeah. is very keen on giving his supporters quality. Exactly. He will spend his money exactly. to do what he has to do. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people are taking shortcuts. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. I don't think... I'm just talking about the majority. A lot, like like I said, a lot of people are keeping events just to make a money. They don't care about the event. They don't yeah. care about you as a patron. They mm. don't care about the industry. They don't give a damn. Yeah. They just want to make, you know, their rent is due next month. <laughs> do you think? Do you know if it's, their, do you think, rent, do you think people due. keep partying because their rent is due? Their rent's due. For real? Their rent's due. Wow. Their, their rent is due. So they get headphones on consignment. Get liquor from Bugsy on consignment. Big up Bugsy. Big up Bugsy. And Gino the drinks man. <laughs> Get liquor on consignment. Yeah. Keep a headphone party. Mm. Pay your rent. So, well, Mag, I feel like we need to <laughs> go to these promoters and really ask them, why are you keeping a party? <laughs> they don't really that, that's, that's, I've never heard the it's, the, it's, it's a very similar thing to why I said people want to be hosts. You just want to be mm. seen. Do you yeah. care? Mm. Do you actually care? Mm. Because if you care... Sometimes you don't need to make the bar. Yeah, yeah, 
man. Let the bar do whatever the bar's gonna do. Care about your party. Put your party in a place Built. where people can come out, dress nice, mm. and enjoy themselves. But yeah. nah, this 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 secret location and I get your postcode at 1 30 in the morning. Mm. Huh? I, I get yeah. your postcode at 1 30. So what time you want me to be there? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then everybody shows up at 3 30 and it's like headphones, like I understood the headphones during lockdown. I understood, you know, we were stuck in a dive to try and keep some sort of entertainment. So you had the headphones. Yeah. There's no lockdown no more. Why am I still saying headphone parties? Yeah. If you if you can't keep a party and have proper music in your event, don't keep it. Like, do you have to keep it? Is nobody's forcing you to? Yeah. Nobody says, yo, you Sasha, you better keep an event. Mm -mm. It's it's what you want. Okay, cool. So if this is what you want. Then want for your people that come out. Fully. Want your people to come out and be nice. I hear that. Because you know I mean? I'm just thinking flashback to my party because I had it in, yeah. it wasn't the best of venue, but yeah. that wasn't the original, original venue. Yeah. venue. However, the original venue wasn't a club like that. Yeah, but yeah. the reason why it wasn't in a club like that, the ceiling for my pole couldn't fit. Yeah. So <laughs> I have to have, because even I had um, 701, yeah, yeah. Offer, but the pole can't, can't fit, fit 701. Yeah. You know? So... I hear that about wanting to give people because I want to go. If I'm going to put my makeup on, I want to put my heels on and go out as well. I don't yeah. want to just do that and go in the backyard. Like, it doesn't like I said, sense. I mean, there's, there's times where you want to hold mm. like an authentic Jamaican party. You want to be in the street and, and have that reminiscent feel of like you're back in Jamaica. And I think there's times for that. But when that starts to become... Where'd you grow up? In New York? No, nah, Miami. Why have you got a New York accent? Then? I don't know. Wait, because uh, I heard you said Miami earlier. Sorry. Let me tell you, let me tell you what it is, right? You listen Remember, to a lot of like. Nah, I have. I'm born in England, so I have the proper English. Yeah. And in Miami, they talk really, really bad. Like how bad? Show me. Demonstrate. Like, tell me. Four is faux. Faux. <laughs> faux. They don't say shrimp. It's scrimp. Oh shit. They don't say street. It's screet. I'm finna go to the store and get I'm finna go to the store and get some scrap, man. Cool across the street. They say street for real. Yeah. I'm gonna listen again. Yeah, so it's just Miami is it's my American accent with the proper mm -hmm. English, and that's what you get. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what that's kind of what you get. Tell us a little bit more about your personal life. We don't know anything about English for your personal life. Maybe people at home do if they don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said good. <laughs> English fire doesn't have a personal life. You've got a ring on your finger. Are you married? Yeah. To? My wife. <laughs> you have a wife? I was expecting to say the music. You have a wife? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yes. I did not. My wife is MacBook Pro, 15 inch. I was going to say, what's, I was going to say, what's your wife's real name? Oh, Apple. Apple. MacBook Pro, 1500. You're crazy. Size. No, um, English fire doesn't have a personal life. So DJ as far as a character. I was interviewing somebody and they said something about DJs. They said a lot of things about DJs, but one of the things is DJs, like every DJ like has a woman. If it's not theirs, they're borrowing somebody. Facts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. Facts. If it's not their woman, they're borrowing somebody. Every DJ has a woman. It's either theirs, borrowed, on loan. Smuddies on loan. Um, I think you guys call it higher purchase. So somehow, some way, every DJ, every DJ has a woman. Wow. Okay. So ladies, if a DJ ever tells you, no, I'm single. Lies. <laughs> All right. Well, I like the honesty. So we're going to keep it right there with the honesty. Yeah. Tell me, what do you think is the most missed? understood thing that people have been said like misconception about DJs that's just like not true whether it's good <laughs> or bad um is it true that all DJs are gallus not all DJs not all DJs all DJs are not gallus some you know? of them lie them yeah, just yeah, not yeah. The, it's I mean, just like saying all men are dogs not all men are dogs just yeah. a lot of them yeah that's it. All, all DJs can't be gallus. What's it about DJs then? Because then people tend to feel like because if you're a DJ, then girls just want to take their underwear off or girls want to get crazy. They say yeah. music is a devil's me um, language, so I don't know. DJs, artists, it's all within the same That's bracket. Music. It's, just, it's just the entertainment business. So 
anybody at home if you're struggling to find a woman, do something to do with music. Do something to do with music. <laughs> you, you get a girl like that. <laughs> it's oh my god. Sorry. Yeah. DJs don't hate me. I y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. But it is what it is. You've been on some major stages, like yeah. with lots of people, not just not even just about the numbers, like different crowd. Yeah. You know, like you've been to the uni crowd, you've been to the dance hall crowd, mm-hmm. you've been with a diverse crowd, like in relations to race and stuff like that. How do you still maintain you, English Fire? Because there still has to be an essence of you whenever you leave that stage. Yeah. How? Um, it's the passion you have for what you do. Mm-hmm. The passion that you have for what you do keeps you grounded. You know what I mean? I think, and I tell this to young DJs all the time as well, I never wanted to be the best DJ in the world. Mm. That was never a goal of mine. Even when I start, started taking DJing seriously, I yeah. never wanted to be number one. I never wanted to be the greatest. That was never a passion of mine. Right. I just wanted to be cared for and in the conversation. Mm. I just wanted to be in the conversation. Okay. And I never rushed my journey. I think a lot of DJs try to rush their journey. Mm-hmm. And the best part of your journey is the actual journey. Once you reach the top, that's it. There's only one place to go, but down. Mm. Enjoy the journey. Because that's the best part of it. You know what I mean? So I think that, me taking that long time to start touring and traveling has enabled me that when I get on those big stages mm. to stay humble and stay grounded. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it just keeps me, it remembers, I remember where I came from. It's funny. Someone asked Nicki Minaj, um, what would she tell her younger self? Yeah. And she did say, calm down. Yeah. Like, it's not that deep. Just enjoy. Enjoy the journey. Day. Enjoy the journey mm. because... You know, I look back on my career now and I couldn't see myself in the game this long mm. back then. But I look back on my career now and I'm like, yo, you really, you really did some things. Like you really lived, you really mm. toured, you really did what a lot of people, you know, take as a hobby. That was my career. My, this bought a house. Like I'm being real. DJ bought a house. It ain't no joke. Like mm. I did a career. It wasn't. I, it's may started out as a hobby, yeah. but this became a career. Mm-hmm. Any job that I do now is second to music my because music was my career. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think that journey, it's the journey, man. That journey is, you, you look back on it and you realize it went really, really quick. Mm-hmm. But if you enjoy it and you take your time with it, you can look back and be like, yeah, man, I did this. You know what I mean? I look back and I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Two more questions, then we go to the game. Because even though you said, I'm not going to talk this long, <laughs> we love to see the time right yeah. now. So, hosting, whilst you're on stage, sometimes things, most of the time, actually nine out of ten times, things don't go to plan. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's not even a plan. Yeah. Until yeah. you get there and it's like, okay, whoever you see, whoever, whatever. But sometimes you're there and people that weren't on the bill turn up to perform. Like, how, how does that make you feel? What does that do to your head? What does that do? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, you say no, but they take the talker phone. Take t- from who? No, 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 from the other Oh! <laughs> I think that's from me. <laughs> no, from um, the other artist. You know, like, sometimes they do a little run-on. Yeah, things like that, you just got to kind of... It's, it's irritating, but you got to stay professional. Mm. You know what I mean? And, you know... Yeah. Have a smile on your face at all times mm. and, you know, kill them with kindness. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. Come on. Get off my stage. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And uh, some people just want to be seen. Mm. Are, you do- are you doing this because you really think the crowd want to hear you or see you? Or are you doing it just because you want to be seen? Yeah. And it's that. You just want to be seen, bro. But Not do you think we have a lot of adults that's basically Kids. suffering from Kids. attention? Kids. Kids. Yeah. We have a lot of grown mm. children. Yeah. It's like I like to call them. Yeah, a lot of grown children. You're suffering. Yeah. I don't know if your mom didn't give you a hug or whatever, yeah. but <laughs> it's just a lot of I want to be seen. Poor. All right. Well, English Fire, thank you so much for answering my question, for joining me for this Thank chat. you. you thank know, you. We know about your shows. That's up and coming. And congratulations yes. again on the Skang and Governor show. Thank you. That's thank on you. the 17th of April. 17th of April, bank holiday weekend. Versus... Part three. Coming soon. I just can't wait to hear. Coming soon. Coming Who soon. Who is going to be? Have you got the people in mind already? Yeah, they've been contacted. Okay. Are they in this room? No. <laughs> okay, that's good. 
No. You said that quick. Somebody, somebody was contacted that's part of the team that's in this room. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like this. I like, no, I've got something to work with. Yeah, All yeah. right. So, English Fire, I'm so glad that you said that you are married to Apple. Okay? Yeah, She doesn't get jealous. So no, okay. no, 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 she's good. We're going to play a game of marry, snug, or avoid. Okay. All right. So, I'm yeah. going to say three names, and you just have to put them in that category. Okay. For example, I might say... No, let's just start the game. All right, let's go. All right. Shensia, Jay the Kingdom. Mary. And Spice. Snug. You're avoiding Shensia? Yeah. Why? Yeah, me avoid Shensia. Right now, me avoid. <laughs> right now, okay. You should have asked ask why. Like, you said avoid if tweaks. You, if you would have asked me like eight months ago, like a year ago, yeah. oh boy, Mary Snug and everything. Oh, wow. But no, but nah, yeah, avoid. All right. Little quiche. Like, say all the names and you decide what you're doing with them. Say the same three. Yep. Yeah, 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 let's I'm go. Say, little, um, little Key, Shorty Shan, Tanaki Moan. In that order. Look at Key, Snug. Who was the next one? Who was the second Tanaki one? Moan. Tanaki Moan. Mary and Snug. Who was the last one? <laughs> Shorty Shan. Mary, Snug, then I vied. <laughs> wait, 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 no, you have to choose one for each. Okay. You have to. <laughs> so, who are you uh, marrying? Mary Tanner. Mm -hmm. Who was the second one? Liquor quiche. quiche. I'm gonna avoid liquor quiche and I'll snug Shorty Shan. I'm only avoiding liquor quiche car. No, you'd have to explain. I got my I, I got my song scare me. <laughs> it's a god man song scare you. Yeah, and I found out a bad man, so we don't want a problem. <laughs> Lady Danger, Delicious, Show oh, no, what's her name? Clear Angel. Mary Clay Angel. Snug Lady Danger. And what was the last one? Delicious. And avoid delicious. Okay. Another one is dun 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 Indy, Trey Blue, and Miss Bandy. Marry Trey Blue, Snug Indy. I'm avoiding Miss Bandy. You want Shanti kill me? <laughs> I avoid. <laughs> I'm avoiding. <laughs> Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, Lil Kim. I'm avoiding Lil Kim. Um, I married Nicki Minaj. She got the most money. And I still can't be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that, that sounds good. Yeah. You had your reasons. Dojo Cat. Yeah. Sweetie. Yeah. And Megan the Stallion. Uh, avoid Doja Cat. Marry Megan and snug Sweetie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Little Quiche, Vlicious, who else did you? Miss Bandy, last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take Shanto to her picture. I'm not gonna marry Bandy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm snuggingly um, Vlicious, and I'm still avoiding Little Quiche because our song them scare me. If she didn't do the gun song, me and Le Little Quiche would have snug because she would have said English. Come. Yeah. yeah, but the gunman song, it, yeah, it scares me. So okay, on that right. note, that is a wrap. Thank you so much for playing snog marrying avoid with thank me. You, thank <laughs> you, ladies. Don't kill me. Okay, I love you all though. I love you all. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's oh get it. Oh my god. <laughs>